This is the day that the Lord has made, and just let us rejoice and be glad in it. Because this is Remembrance Day Sunday, I also add, greater love has no one than this, that one lay down their life for one's friends. You may be seated. <clears throat> On be I guess I can take this off, can't I? On behalf of our minister, Reverend Don, Dr. Don Flowers, I want to welcome you uh, this, to the service, those present here and those that are watching online. The service today will be a little different, as this is Remembrance Day Sunday, a time when we remember those who have suffered and died, that we can practice our faith, live in reasonable peace, and with a, have a good standard of living. God also gave his son to the world, that each of us may feel love, may feel forgiveness, and may feel hope. So today we remember not just the sacrifice of those who fought and died, but also Jesus' sacrifice. We need to remember, lest we forget. Now, before we start this, the service, of course, we have many announcements. And I'm sorry because they're, I know they're in your bulletins, but those online do not have the bulletin, so I need to read some of those as well. The, uh, first of all, um, the Christian Education meets on Tuesday via Zoom at 6.30. The Property Committee meeting on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. And the church is open on Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday mornings for food bank donations. The advisory board is now accepting suggestions for the Christmas uh, offering. The beneficiary of the Christmas offering will be a project or acute need within our church. So please um, contact uh, Charles For Forney uh, if uh, you have a suggestion of what our church needs at this time. And there will be a Community Remembrance Day service this afternoon uh, in the Community Center parking lot at 2 o'clock. And uh, it would be wonderful if you could come over and, uh, and, and be there. They are, I think, only allowing 50. Is that so? 200. Oh, 200. We're okay. Everybody can come. <laughs> you will have to sign in, just in case. We, um, you also, those in the church, have received these green sheets, and I hope that you will look at them. The uh, Deacons Board have prepared a uh, craft Advent bags for families due to the fact that we can't have an Advent workshop. And if you are interested in having one of these bags, um, you would need to sign up by next weekend because we need to know how many bags we'll have. And then the following Sunday, your name will be on them and you just come and pick them up. So we do have to have some organization. So if you would um, either sign up on your way out or uh, um, next Sunday. Also, there's a beautiful um, gingerbread uh, manger scene uh, that uh, has directions and, and uh, all the patterns and everything. And if some adults would like to have that, they could sign up just for that. And we do have a piece of paper outside. The um, other things that I just wanted to mention, uh, Reverend Don is finishing his quarantine. He's doing well. He says that now he can sleep, that the election is over. And uh, he hopes to be back here on Thursday. The, um, and I just wanted to mention again that to thank everyone that participated in the uh, Lo Loyal Workers Luncheon. We made over $1,000 for the church. And you know, that'll go towards fuel and other repairs. So it, it, you're giving, but it's also being given back to the church. And we will be having another one towards the end of this month. So keep, keep that in the back of your mind. Don't forget the ongoing studies that we have going online, the Wednesday morning prayer time and the Thursday morning coffee time. And if you call the office, if you can find out um, how you can get online to get these things. The, um, and I just wanted to mention, because being Port Williams people were interested in our community, you, most of you would know that there was an accident this week where somebody was, was hit by a truck um, on the corner of High Street um, 358 and, and uh, Stars Point Road. It was Glenda Keddy, um, named Clark, 
Eric Clark's wife, who lives on 558, and uh, Mary and Ed Clark, are that's their daughter-in-law. They were members of our church for a long time. She's in Halifax uh, and improving each day. She was very um, hurt quite badly and was air to Halifax, but they covet your prayers. I asked them if I could announce that today, and they said they would be very pleased if people would would uh, hold them up in prayer. And the other one that uh, has given me permission to uh, mention is Audrey Griffin. She's had pneumonia, she's been in intensive care, she's now in the step-down unit in Kenville. This is Stu Griffin's wife, lives again on two, uh, 358. And, um, but they hope that maybe she'll be able to come home Monday or Tuesday. But she's not very well, so uh, it, we, she, they also covet our, our prayers. I don't think that there's any more announcements that I have. Does anybody else have any announcements? Well, before we start this service, because it is Remembrance Day Sunday, let us stand and listen to our national anthem. <clears throat> Now, as we quiet our hearts and our minds to receive the presence of God and to prepare to worship him, let us listen to the beautiful voice of Barb Rushton, accompanied by her daughter, sing the prayer of St. Francis.
call to worship this morning. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. In a, wor- in a world filled with violence and war. We gather together to celebrate the promise of peace. In a world filled with tyranny and oppression. We gather together to celebrate the promise of justice for all. In a world filled with hunger and greed. We gather Our hope is in the name of the God Almighty. The Creator, the Redeemer, and Sustainer of heaven Amen. and earth. Let us pray. Father, you have called us together to worship you. Help us to feel your presence, your love, and your guidance as we listen, pray, and reflect. It is our time with you, dear Lord. We are so blessed. Amen. And now we're going to have a little bit of a children's time. And you can all be children, as well as those that are out in Lockwood Hall and those that are watching from home. uh, You will notice that many of us are wearing poppies today. And um, it's interesting. Uh, I was in Toronto for the Royal Winter Fair one year. And somebody actually came up to me and said, why are all you people wearing red flowers? And many countries do not have poppies. I don't think the United States do poppies. Do they, Wayne? No, they don't. And of course, uh, I just thought it was so surprising because we just take for granted that these couple of weeks that uh, poppies are going to appear everywhere. And um, so I just wanted to ask the children this morning, Why do you think that we wear poppies? And I hope that at school that they're learning it or in their homes that they're learning it. And it's called a symbol. It's a symbol so that we will remember something behind the symbol. The symbol itself means nothing. It's the story behind it that does. And uh, so they need, we need to know that the, these poppies, my daughter did this because I couldn't find a big one, um, are for, um, to remind us of those that fought for our country and uh, they did it out of love. Love for us, love for the future, love for their country that they felt was worth fighting for. And many died in the process. And so we need to be thankful or what we have today because of their sacrifice. The other symbol that I think is very important and we see all the time and sometimes don't even reflect on is the cross. And uh, we wear poppies and I have a cross on here. Many many sometimes wear crosses so that they uh, uh, can say, I am a Christian. And being a Christian Again, there's a story behind that. Because Jesus died, we have forgiveness of our sins. We can come to Jesus and when, when we do something wrong and just say, I'm sorry, and he forgives us. And if we have to um, be sad or a little bit scared, we know that he's right with us, and that's called prayer. We just talk to him and say, Jesus, I'm scared, and he will give, give, give you um, some kind of hope or some kind of courage just to go on because you're not alone. And then he also gives us hope, hope that we someday will be with him and see him again in heaven. So we wear the cross, we wear the poppy to remember. And I hope that as you look at these symbols, you will say a prayer to Jesus and thank him for those that protect us and though, and he that is always with us. Now let's fold our hands and have a little prayer. Dear Jesus, we love you and we thank you for all those who have given their lives so that we can have a peaceful life. And we thank you for symbols to remind us of you and of all good things that you have done for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now we're going to take a turn in the service. We're going to take a few minutes to reflect on those who have made great sacrifices for our country and for us. 
As we think about these people, remember that God was with them, and they are now part of the cloud of witnesses watching over us. We will lay our wreath, have the names read, a minute of silence broken by the singing of Flanders Fields. We will start this part of the service. Good morning. Uh, each year on November the 11th, Remembrance Day, <clears throat> we mark the date in 1918 when the guns of the Western Front fell silent after four years of continuous war. It was the end of the First World War. There were in somewhere in the neighborhood of 61,000 Canadian casualties. On this Remembrance Day, 2020, we marked the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II, <clears throat> with over 46,000 Canadians killed. Today, we recognize the sacrifice of the following members of our community from both of these wars. Uh, World War I, Harry Chase, Waldo Gates, Grant McGee, Frederick Miller, George Price, Clyde Rafuse, Avery Thompson, and John Woodruff. World War II, John Armstrong, Captain J.E. Faulkner, Norman Fellows, Gerald Gates, Grant Graves, Daniel Grodecki, Charles Hagerty, Harold Ketty, George Lance, Victor McRae, Murray Minor, John Morrison, and Mary Clerk Peak. They shall grow not old, as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, <clears throat> nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Thank you. want to be seated. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. What a blessing to have a gift like that to be able to sing. Now, I have just picked three small scriptures that I'd like to read today. Uh, the first one is John 15, 13. And it says, as we all know, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You know, this is a higher expression of love than to give up your very life, to be willing to leave family and friends and knowing that death is possible. To many brave heroes who have gone before us, we thank them for their sacrifice of love. And then, of course, we have John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. The ultimate sacrifice ever made and again done out of love for all of us. Thanks be to God. The final scripture, Matthew 5, 9. Blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called children of God. That is the torch that is passed on to us today. We need to receive it and carry it forward. Amen. Now, I'm going to call upon Aaron and Thomas to come forward. I found this recitation written by Jim Haley, a 12-year-old boy, and these boys are 12, from Fortune PEI. It was in a uh, book uh, that was sent out last year of prize winners of those that wrote things uh, for, the, the, um, for Remembrance Day in various schools. Um, so we are in good hands after you hear this. If this future generation understands that war is terrible, but sometimes necessary, that we might live in peace. Aaron and Thomas. How, How can, can I, I ever, ever thank, thank you? you? You lay awake so I could sleep. You went through fear so I can have comfort. You went through danger so I could be safe. How can I ever thank you? You risked your life so that I could keep my life. You lived a nightmare so that my dream could come true. You went through war so that I could have peace. How can I ever thank you? You left your family and your friends so that I would never need to. You went through sadness so I could have happiness. You starved to death so I could have enough to eat. How can I ever thank you? I will take care of my country. I will help those in need. I will live a life that you would be proud of. I will never forget what you've done. This, this is, is how I will, I will thank you. you. Thank you, gentlemen. You read it so very well. Now, a symbol is defined as a thing that represents or stands for something else, especially a material object representing something abstract. There are so many symbols that we might have that represent deeper meanings. The children, of course, if you're driving in New Minus and see the McDonald's uh, arches, they all know that they're not going to go and eat the arches. They want to stop and have a, have a hamburger or something. So it, 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 there's a deep meaning to those golden arches. The peace sign of the 60s represented those who believed in peace. Our village crest, if you look at it, represents farming, faith, family, community. And we say that Jesus is the light, Jesus is the bread, Jesus is the shepherd. Well, 
Was Jesus really those things? No. But each symbol has great meaning behind them. It is how we perceive the meaning behind it and the action that we take because of the sign that makes the difference. They are reminders, reminders of what we know and how we should act. As I spoke to the children earlier, symbols have meaning behind themselves. The poppies that we see remind us of all of those who have gone before us and given the greatest gift to our democratic nation, their lives. Their duty, their honor, and their lives were precious gifts given for the future of our country and our families. And so when we see the poppy, we should think about this and remember and be thankful. The recitation that the young lads read so well really makes us think. The horrors of war that many endured and how some gave their lives has such deep meaning for us today. We have a standard of living in Canada because of those that fought for us, and we need to be thankful. We are receiving the fruit of that sacrifice, we live in relative comfort and peace. We live in a democratic country that has unity within diversity, a country that people of different persuasions can live in safety. We need to keep praying that this country remains this way and is an example to other countries. Yes, as the boys read, we need to be thankful and never to forget what we have. The other symbol, that is so important within this nation is the cross. For if we live lives pleasing to God, we will follow his commandment of love, to love God, to love our neighbor, and to love ourselves. We need to remember also, when we are asked, who is, your, is my neighbor? When Jesus was asked that, he replied that even your enemy needs to be loved. Now that's hard, and we need to pray that that person, group, or nation will find Christ in their hearts and minds so that peace and the good of all citizens, not power, becomes their goal. Today we think of our neighbors in the United States. We need to hold them up in prayer as that the transition to a new president is handled well. The cross reminds us of the ultimate sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ made for all people, but it is us that must make that meaning uh, real within ourselves and within our relationships. For his sacrifice is not in the past. It's real today, and it will be real in the future. For it offers us forgiveness of our sins, it offers us relationship with the Father without having to go through hierarchy, his sacrifice offers us hope of life after death in the presence of total love. But, as with any symbol, we have to act as well. We have to believe that Jesus' promises are trustworthy. We have to ask him into our hearts, and we have to listen to his guidance in our lives. We look at this communion table, and carved in it are the words, do this in remembrance of me. That word symbol is calling us to action. Look at what the Father did for us. He gave his one and only Son up unto death, and it was a horrible death, a crucifixion, but he did it that we could be saved. Are we going to be blasé and say, thanks, Lord, and then go on our merry way? Or are we going to remember constantly all that we have, all that we are offered, all that we are promised, because Jesus came, taught, suffered, died, rose from the dead for us? We need to learn from his life and his teachings and in living resurrected lives, we then can be thankful every day. You know, that is a good reason that we should never forget that God put people on this earth for a purpose. We each have gifts to be used for
for the good of the world and to bring us closer to him. He put our service people on this earth to protect us, to not allow evil to rule over us, and some gave their lives that we live in relative peace today. And again, we should be thankful that they were given the will to go into service, not just them for themselves and those that lived at that time. They were there for us. And again, we should be thankful. This is the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II. Some of us remember that war, but many have not lived through war. But you know, today, we have to live differently because we're living in a war of disease. We have to live differently than we did a year ago. We feel confined, run by rules, fearful of those around us, annoyed when rules are not followed, grieving for those who have died, unable to have funerals the way that we would like to have them, or sometimes we can't even, aren't even allowed to go to a friend's funeral. Gatherings that have to be canceled. In our family, we have 22 that come for Christmas dinner. What are we going to do this year? We're only allowed 10. Things are different. We have to make choices. Think of the food, like flour. Remember when it wasn't available when we wanted it? Yes, these are hard times of isolation and not being feeling that we're really in control. But with God's help, this too will pass. So we can feel a little bit about how those who kept the home fires burning during the war. They did not have contact with their loved ones on the front, but you know today we have Skype and we can see our families immediately. So there is not that feeling of distance that there was at that time. We can be in constant communication, not waiting for letters with lines blacked out or that dreaded telegram. We may have had some shelves in our stores low on stock for a few days, but we didn't have food coupons and lack of necessities for years as those who lived through the war. So I say trust in God during these difficult times and be thankful. Be responsible and know this too will pass. We think of those that are in the thick of this war on disease, the medical profession, the um, caregivers, the politicians, the essential workers. They too are sacrificing their health and possibly their lives for us, we need to be thankful and we ask God to protect them. We need to ask our Heavenly Father to help us to remember that freedom does not automatically perpetuate itself. We have to work at it, nurture it, protect it, and pray for it. Freedom like faith needs our attention and our cooperation. If we're told to wear masks, if we're told to keep our distance, we need to do that for our freedom in the future. Let us always remember Christ's sacrifice made for our spiritual well-being and future with him. Let us remember our life on earth now made better because of the sacrifice of men and women of the forces and the health care watching over us. We in this country are blessed. And I pray that we keep our moral and ethical ideals in the forefront for so many in the past and even today have our best interests at heart. Never let us forget. Thanks be to God. And now we come to a time where we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you are our God of love, and we ask that you be with this congregation this week. Thank you for bringing our minister safely home and put your protection around Anita, their family, and all we know who are traveling. O oh Lord, we hold up our neighbors in the United States. 
They are living in stressful times with the pandemic and the election results. We ask that your wisdom, your will, your justice, and peace prevails. These are trying times, Lord. We are walking in the unknown, but you have told us not to fear, for you are with us. Continue to remind us of this, Lord. Our hearts reach out to those who are lonely, those who have emotional, financial, relational, physical, or spiritual difficulties. If one of us can be your presence in their lives, please help us to listen to you and to act. Be with our nominating committee and other church committees as they try to bring your message to our children, youth, adults, and our community. May they be blessed with your insight. We are so thankful that you cherish each one of us and give us talents to share, share with this church. Lord, as this is a remembrance service, I also want to pray for those families that had loved ones pay the ultimate price for our freedom. We think of how they have followed in the footsteps of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Please hold up our present-day servicemen and women in your strong arms. Cover them with your sheltering grace and your presence as they stand in the gap for our protection. We also, Lord, remember the families of today's troops. We ask you for your unique blessings to fill their homes. We pray that your peace, provision, and strength will fill their lives. And now, Lord, be with those who are in the forefront of the war on the virus. We ask you to protect them, give them wisdom and courage, strength and good help to carry out their mandate. Be with us all in this matter. Be with our nation, be with our province, the valley, and our homes, and encourage us to be responsible citizens during this difficult time. Be with us all as this week and fill us with your love and peace to share with others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We will now hum the peace, let there be peace on earth. As we leave this place today, I want to thank all of those that participated in the service. The beautiful singing was just lovely. Thank you so much. The music from the piano, the young gentleman that spoke, uh, Ruth and Wayne, that helped. And of course, we can't forget our technical people that are working before and after the service. So as we go, dear Lord, go with us. Open our eyes and our ears to hear your calling in our everyday lives. 
Help us to affirm our commitment to your standards of life in our country, in our homes, and in our lives. And help us to share your love and your peace with others. So let us go now. And may the God, the Father, bless you and keep you. God, the Son, save you and direct your paths. And may the Holy Spirit teach you and help you to be the best person that you can be. And, O Lord, go with us, filling us with your love, joy, hope, and peace this day and forevermore.